Hello and welcome to this lesson on generating mathematical artwork for NFTs through Samila and Python. Today, non-fungible tokens or NFTs are one of the most talked about topics in the crypto world. In light to this, this lesson covers how you can make actual artworks using mathematics through an open source Python package called Samila. So I stumbled upon this package today morning and when I tried it out, I thought the results were quite impressive. So the concept behind what Samila is based upon is simple to understand. That is, when you transform a square shape space from the Cartesian coordinate system to any other arbitrary coordinate system, you generate a plot that feels like art, as shown over here. So let us get started by first installing and importing Samila in Python and then we'll move on to creating these artworks. You can install Samila using the Python package manager which is pip. For this tutorial, we'll be using version 0.3 of Samila since it is the latest release of the package. So you can open up your command line or terminal and execute the following command to install Samila that is pip install Samila equals to equals to 0.3. So I won't be installing the package right now because I've already installed it but please go ahead and run this command on your end. And to test if your installation is correct, you can try out the following line of import, which is import Samila. So if I run this, I do not get any error. That means my installation is correct. And if you do not get any error when executing this import on your part as well, then you have successfully installed and imported Samila in Python. Now let's move on to create our generative art. So first we'll be importing some necessary libraries that are needed for this lesson. We'll import the random library to generate random values. We'll import the math library to use mathematical values. We'll also import the matplotlib.pyplots module as plt so that we can plot out our plots. Then we're importing two different classes which is generative image and projection from the Samila library. So we do not have to import the entire library itself. We can just import these two things and we can get started. So as I've told, Samila performs transformations on a square shaped Cartesian coordinate system. So that means for the transformations, we need two different mathematical functions for our x-axis values and our y-axis values to be plotted out. So for the same, I'm creating two different functions over here according to Samila's GitHub example and you do not have to worry about what these functions do. It's just a simple mathematical function. You can write your own as well. But here you have to note that we are passing two different values x and y. So I'll show you how these two functions are used in just a short while but do understand that this is the generic way of writing two functions to pass into Samila. Now let me import all of these libraries by running this cell and also initialize these two functions f1 and f2 by running this cell as well. Now that we have two functions ready, we simply use the generative image class and its methods generate and plot to create generative art. Note that we will dive into how these values are generated and plotted by looking at the actual code behind the two methods later down in this tutorial. Hopefully by then you will be able to contribute to Samila on your own and make the library even better. But for now, let us simply see what kind of art Samila can generate. So first I'm setting a default seed for generating random values. So I'll run this. And now with this three lines of code, I'm creating our generative art. So the first line of code is Z equals to generative image F1 comma F2. Here we are initializing an object called as Z from the class generative image and we're passing in our two functions that we've initialized earlier as our parameters, which are f1 and f2. So once the object g is initialized through this line of code, we call the generate method off of the object and we pass in the seed, which we kept for our random value generator. Then we plot out the values that get generated through the generate method by simply calling the plot method and specifying the size of the plot that we want. So if I run all of these three lines of code, this will take a little while, but not very long. Here you can see the plot that we've created. 
So to create this, all we did was initialize two different functions that dictate the transformations for the square set space in the Cartesian system. So if we change the functions over here, let's say I'll put this to y to the power of 6 and x to the power of 1. And if I initialize it again, and again if I run these three lines of code, you see that we get a different kind of plot. And the plot is dictated by the functions that we are defining in the first place. So I'll just revert it back to what it was so we can continue on with the lesson. Okay, great. So now that we have our original plot back, you can also specify the projection that you want during plotting. So here we have the plot method and now I'm passing a different parameter called projection and I'm setting its value as projection.polar. Remember, we had imported projection a while ago. So if I run this, then the plot will look different because we're setting our projection to be in the polar coordinate system. Also, you can specify a new range for your square set space that Samila initializes behind the word to transform. So the default value for the square set space is minus pi to pi with a step of 0.01, .01 but during generate, you can also specify a different range. So as before, I'm initializing an object z using our generative ms class that Samila provides and passing in the functions f1 and f2 during initialization. Then during the generate method, I'm passing in different parameters for the start, step and stop. So this means the square shape space that we initially create is now a little bit different than what it is by default. So once this is done, we again call the plot method from our object and pass in the size of the plot. So if I run all of these lines of code again, you can see that we now have a different kind of plot made. Finally, you can also add color to the generated artwork. So to do that, you just have to specify the color parameter and the busy color parameter during the plotting. So here I'm specifying the color as yellow and the background color or busy color as black. And I'm setting the projection to be polar and the plot size to be 8 by 8. So if I run this line of code, you can see that we now have something that is purely generated through mathematical transformations. So this is the capability of Samila. Now, in order to save the artworks that you have made using Samila, you can use the save underscore image method from the object itself, which is Z in this case. So here I'm just calling the save underscore image method from Z, which is our object and I'm passing in the path where I want the file to be stored at. So the file address or file underscore ADR parameter is being specified as myart.png. So the path from where I'm running this Jupyter notebook, a file called myart.png will be created when I'll run this line of code. So I'll run this and the artwork has been saved. You can also use the depth parameter to save a higher resolution picture. So I'm specifying the depth as 5 over here and the other parameter is same. So if I run this again, now I have a higher resolution picture ready. So here's what the artwork looks like full frame. By the way, you can also save your art in NFT storage. NFT storage is a free decentralized storage that lets users store the NFT content and metadata seamlessly and securely with IPFS and Filecoin. I'll put the link in the description for a blog written by Filecoin in order to help you understand more about NFT stories on your own. So you can upload your generated images directly to NFT stories using the NFT underscore stories method and by passing in your API key. So here I'm calling the NFT underscore stories method from our object which is Z. Then for the API key parameter, I simply have to pass in my API key in the form of a string. I won't do this for now, but you can do it on your end by signing in to NFT stories and getting your API key. So now you understand how the Samila library can be used to create artwork very efficiently using simple mathematical transformations. So I want to show you what goes under the hood when you call the generate and plot method from the class generative image. 
So the two methods that we are going to be discussing which is generate and plot can be found in zenimage.py in the open source GitHub repository of Samila. So let us look at how the values are generated when we pass in two different functions f1 and f2 and how these are plotted out using the plot method. So first we need to import the necessary library that is iter tools. So I'll run this. Then we need to set some constant values. Remember I told you that the default range of values for the square shaped space in the Cartesian system is minus pi to pi. So this is the default values for that and the step is 0.01. So I'll run these three lines of code to initialize these constants. And finally, I'm creating a helper function called float underscore range which takes in the start, stop and step values and creates a range of float values based on the starting and the stopping values and the step in between them. So I'll run this and initialize the function. Remember, this is the function that Samila uses in its code base itself. So I'm showing it to you as it is. Now, since we need a square shaped space at first, we need to create two different ranges from minus pi to pi with a step of 0.01. These ranges will serve as our x-axis and our y-axis values during plotting. So here I'm doing just that. So I'm calling the float range method, passing in the start value, which is minus pi, the stop value, which is pi, and our step value, which is 0.01. Then I'm converting it into a list and I'm storing this list into range one variable. I'm doing the same for range two as well. So I'll run this and our ranges are made. So let's look at the first five values of range one and range two. Here you can see that they are identical because we're creating the same range for the square set space. Now let us find the Cartesian product of the two ranges. That is a set of all of the combinations of the two ranges that we've created. And by the way, let's look at the shape of the range as well. So range, one and if I use the built-in function len, we get 629. So there are 629 values in this list called range one. And similarly, since range one and range two are initialized in the same way, range two also has 629 values. So if we multiply 629 by 629, then the Cartesian product of the two ranges will be of that shape. So to find the Cartesian product, I'm using the iter tools library that we just imported. Then I'm using the product method and passing in the two ranges. So once this Cartesian product has been found, I'm creating a list from it and I'm assigning it to the variable range underscore prod. So I'll run this and let us look at the first five values of range underscore prod. So here you can see we have a combination of the first value of range one with all of the values of range two. So if I write 10 over here, you can see that it continues onwards. So in this way, now we have a combination of all of the values of these two ranges. So I'll just print out the length of these lists. So here you can see range one has length 629, range two has 629 and range prod has 629 into 629, which is this much. And finally, Samila generates the values for plotting by passing them through our functions, which is f1 and f2. So here I have two lists called data1 and data2 initialized as empty. Then I'm iterating over each of the values in this list over here. And for each item, I'm passing in the values x and y. Remember, I told you f1 and f2 have two different values x and y that need to be passed. So this is what we're doing over here. So item zero and item one over here are these two respectively in the first loop. So this function f1 generates a value which we append to our list which is data one and we append the real value from it. And for the second function f2, we do the same and append it to the list data two. So I'll run all of these lines of code. By the way, I'm just initializing the random seed that we had set in the first part of this tutorial over here. So this is where the seed was being used. Now, finally, let us look at what data one and data two look like. So you can see that these values look a lot different 
because we passed the ranges in two different functions before. So all we have to do now is to plot this out and we have successfully generated the x-axis and y-axis values for plotting. Now let us look at the plot method. So in this section we'll see how data1 and data2 are plotted out which are our variables and first we'll start by defining some constants as it has been done in the repo itself. So first I'm importing the colors modules from matplotlib as mcolors and then I'm using this colors module to create a range of valid colors. So if you look at the first five valid colors that get created through this then you can see that these are just some color values that matplotlib uses and if I write 10 over here you can see that the list continues on. Then some default parameters are set such as the default color for the plot which is black, the background color which is white, alpha which is the opacity, image size that we set as 8,8 .8 before but right now it's default 10,10. .10. We have the spot size and the projection which we want to set as default which is none in this case. So I'll run this and the constants are set. Next we need to create some helper functions for calculating Levenstein distance between two words as well as for filtering a given color and returning it. So I won't be explaining this function in detail over here. This is just for the purpose of plotting colors that look nice. So I'll initialize this function and this function as well which is filter color and all we have to do is map the colors and the background colors. So that is what is being done over here and I'll run this. So this gives the color and the background color. Remember I'm just showing you the exact code that the package uses so that you feel comfortable with it when you actually start looking at the code by yourself. Now it's time to create the final plot and it's very simple. You just have to initialize a figure object, you set the size inches, you set the face color, you create a subplot, you set a face color for the subplot and then you make a scatter plot with the two values that we generated or the two lists that we generated that is data2 and data1 and you set the alpha which is opacity, the edge colors, the default spot size, you remove the axis, you set the z order as minus 1 and you add an artist which is our patch over here. So if I run this you can see that we have the same plot we made using the method generate and plot. So this is what happens behind the hood for generating these images. And the main takeaway over here is that first you create a square shaped space and then you transform that space into a different coordinate system by using mathematical functions according to your choosing and when you plot those mathematical functions out in a very clever way you get plots like this. So that is it for this lesson on generating mathematical artwork for NFTs through Samila and Python. If you are interested in more things like this, the click reader provides you a large collection of data science resources to study from. You can check it out by heading over to theclickreader.com. So until next time, bye bye.